Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. Today we are discussing the second part that is the part 2 of the topic electrocardiogram or the ECG. In the part 1 we have discussed the electrophysiology of heart that is how the electrical activity from the heart is uh, recorded graphically on a graph paper, how that electrical activity that is in the form of depolarization and repolarization, how it is transmitted on a ECG paper that is uh, how uh, a graph that is different waves are formed okay like uh, P wave, QRS complex, T wave and all okay today in this part 2 we are going to discuss the normal electrocardiogram in lead 2 okay now what is this lead we are going to discuss in the next video that is there are uh, in general we record an electrocardiogram in 2L leads okay so that is that includes the bipolar limb leads augmented limb leads and also the unipolar chest leads so what is that uh, unipolar bipolar limb leads chest leads we'll discuss in the next video in today's video we are going to only discuss how a normal ecg looks what is the duration of the different waves what is the amplitude of the different waves and especially in uh, bipolar limb lead 2 okay we'll discuss later things in the next topic okay so before that we should be familiar with the ecg paper okay hope you have seen an ecg paper in an ecg machine so i'll just draw uh, how it looks okay so basically that ecg paper consists of so many big squares and small squares i'll take some time to draw that uh, big squares and the small squares and what does that represent on x-axis and y-axis what did that big squares and small squares represent okay so generally on x-axis it represents the time duration okay it represents the time duration and in y-axis that is it represents the amplitude or the current in millivolts so i'm just drawing a very rough diagram please excuse me because i may not draw the exact straight lines because I'm drawing roughly okay so just to make you understand what are the various squares which are present on an ECG paper so as I said you generally this ECG paper the squares what you look under an ECG paper are bigger squares and smaller squares I'm first drawing with this red color ink uh, some bigger squares okay so it basically consists of such bigger squares now each of this bigger square on x-axis there is it is in time duration either in milliseconds or second on y-axis it represents the amplitude or current in millivolt okay so one bigger square one bigger square it represents 0.2 seconds okay on x-axis okay and one bigger square on the y-axis it represent 0.5 millivolt okay i'll just uh, explain you how it is 0.2 seconds and all time being just remember it is 0.2 second and this is 0.4 second okay this is point uh, sorry 0.5 millivolts 0.2 second 0.4 0.6 0 0.8 okay normal cardiac cycle i'll just draw one cardiac cycle what are the waves seen in a one cardiac cycle within a duration of 0.8 second now and the dimension of each of these it is 5 millimeter okay so this will be around 5 millimeter length as well as the width is around 5 millimeter now this bigger squares is further divided by another lines in the into 25 small squares okay bigger square is further divided into 25 smaller squares so i'll just draw that i take some time so that you should be very much uh, familiar about the squares so why i'm taking so i am explaining such in detail because if you while well you when you are going to actually read and interpret an ecg on a patient then you should be able to diagnose and most of the waves you have to diagnose with respect to the time and amplitude and most importantly the time duration so how time duration is calculated just by seeing an ecg and even heart rate can be calculated by the ecg normal ecg pattern so how heart rate is calculated that's all we are going to discuss today so if you know the normal durations then it will be very much easy okay to understand these things so with this uh, blue color lines what i'm drawing right now it will form 25 small squares inside a bigger square okay this red color 
lines forms the bigger square so inside this bigger square there are further 25 smaller squares okay so we have to represent uh, the time duration with this smaller squares also what does this one small square rip is equal to okay so now i'm drawing this horizontal lines also here so in a bigger square if we draw four horizontal and four vertical lines then it will make 25 smaller squares okay you can see 25 smaller squares are there in a bigger square so just by drawing the four vertical and four horizontal lines we can make divide the bigger square into 25 smaller squares now hope this is very much clear to you by this time now this is very rough diagram okay now now we need to to understand or uh, the dimensions of this smaller square so generally generally as i said you this is the time duration okay time duration so this smaller square that is it, it is equal to one millimeter that is this bigger square is five millimeter so it is divided into five parts so it is one millimeter in the vertical height as well as one millimeter in the horizontal direction okay in x-axis or y-axis right so generally the speed of an ecg paper is kept as 25 millimeter per second standard speeds in most of the ecg machine so 25 millimeter per second means that is this is these represent one millimeter this bigger square represent five millimeter now it will be 10 millimeter 15 20 so and so so in 25 millimeter of this paper is traveled per second in one second okay in one second okay so that means this much that is 5 millimeter is traveled in uh, 0.2 seconds okay how we got this time duration as 0.2 second for the bigger square based on the speed limit so this bigger square represents 0.2 second and if we divide 0.2 second by 5 0.2 divided by 5 it will be 0 0.04 second remember this is very important so what does this one small square of one millimeter time duration represents it represents 0 0.0.04 0 .04 seconds okay 0 0.04 seconds now as i said you the height or the amplitude of one bigger square is 0.5 millivolt so if we divide it the smaller square it represents 0 0.1 millivolt okay 0 0.1 millivolt it represents 0 0.1 millivolt so two bigger squares it will be equal to one millivolt roughly so this is the time duration and vertical amplitude of the current you should remember on the y-axis and x-axis most importantly the time duration you should represent because based on the time duration and the uh, waves if it is not uh, in that limited normal time duration then we can diagnose so many clinical conditions how we are going to diagnose that we'll discuss now but before that we should know what are the normal waves and intervals and segments in a uh, lead to so hope you remember our first class so what are the normal waves uh, we have discussed p wave then qrs complex q wave r wave and s wave is together taken as qrs complex then we have t wave okay so for this wave we will consider what is the normal duration and also the current amplitude of the current how much in millivolts okay that is the height of the waves in millivolts that is the normal waves then we see segments there are again many segments in that but we'll discuss about pr segment pr segment and also the st segment then finally we'll discuss about the various intervals so important intervals to be known are pr interval and qt interval remember there is a pr segment also pr interval also what's the segment what is interval we are going to discuss now first come to the p wave okay first come to the p wave so this is a isoelectric line okay when the heart is not there is no current flowing okay now when's the first atria depolarizes that is from the sa node the depolarization current starts if uh, you are not understanding this please go back to our uh, <coughs> previous video that is the part one to understand how the electrical activity that is depolarization and repolarization transmits in the heart muscle okay so now that atrial depolarization is represented by 
P wave. Okay, P wave. The amplitude of the P wave is around one to one point one to point one two millivolts. That is this height. That is around one small square. The height of this P wave. That is the current. It is around point one to point one two millivolt. And the duration. Duration is around point one second. Now, how point one second? It will cover around two and half of this small square. If you remember, one small square. What is the current dura time duration? Point zero four second. Am I very fast? I hope you remember this. Point zero four second. One small square represents point zero four second. So, if you remember, two and half. Small squares means 0.04 plus 0.04 plus 0.02. It will be roughly 0.1 second. So the normal duration of a P wave is around 0.1 second, and an amplitude is around 0.1 to 0.12 millivolt. Okay. Now this is P wave. Now after this P wave, the depolarization current passes through the AV node, and that the AV node is it will form a PR segment. Okay. Again, it is of a two and half. We are segment. The duration is again varies from 0.08 to 0.12 second, roughly. So you can just roughly take two and half small square. That is 0.04, 0.04. That is two small squares is 0.0, uh, 0.08 second. Okay, 0.08 to 0.12 seconds. Okay. So that is the what is what does this represent? PR segment. So it represents the PR segment. So this line is PR segment. Duration is this much, 0.08 to 0.12. Why there is an isoelectric line? We have discussed in the last class. Then, followed by this, there is ventricular depolarization. Again, the total duration that is the QRS complex. Again, it will be of two and half small squares. That is equal to 0.1 second roughly. So it will be again. We'll have one negative wave, Q wave. Then one positive bigger wave that is known as the R wave. Then again one negative wave that is the S wave. So this together it is called as QRS complex. QRS complex. This is R wave. This is Q wave. This is S wave. So many a times this Q wave is absent. Okay. Again the duration two and half small squares. Remember this rule of two and half. Two and half means 0.1 second. Two and half for PR segment. Two and half for QRS segment. So again two and half means it is roughly. One second, you can take in range of 0.08 to 0.12 second. Okay, two to three small squares duration. Again, amplitude, amplitude. Q wave, Q wave is around 0.2 millivolt. R wave is around point. Sorry, one millivolt. It is a very big wave. Okay, which represents the major part of the ventricular depolarization. Yes, wave is again of roughly 0.4 millivolt. So this is the normal amplitude of QRS and duration. Also, you know it. Now, followed by this uh, QRS complex, there is one more isoelectric line that is known as ST segment. ST segment. This one. ST segment again. Again, the duration you can just remember. It is 0.08 second to 0.1 second. Okay. Again, same thing. Roughly, it is almost same thing. Duration ST segment. So this ST segment is very important clinically to diagnose so many things. We'll discuss about that clinical aspect later. But right now we are just concentrating what are the normal ways, what are the normal segments, and what are the normal intervals in an ECG. Later we'll discuss the clinical significance of each of this. Right? So ST segment is elevated in myocardial. This ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and in ischemia it is uh, ST segment de depression. Why it is so? We'll discuss later. Right now remember this one ST segment. And one more important point: the junction at the end. of this qrs complex in the starting of this st segment is known as j point okay it is known as j point now after this st segment we have one more wave that is the t wave which represents the ventricular repolarization okay now this t wave now this t wave the height of the t wave is around 0.3 millivolt okay height is around 0.3 millivolt and this duration okay the duration it will occupy one bigger square it is 0.2 second so it will almost occupy one bigger 
square okay so the height of this t wave that is around uh, 0.3 millivolt height okay 1 2 3 0.3 millivolt and the duration is around 1 bigger square okay that is 0.2 second roughly 0.2 seconds or 0.27 seconds okay 0.27 second then followed when this lateral depolarization again straight line now these are the normal waves and segments of an ecg just to revise p wave if it is, represents the atrial depolarization then qrs complex it represents the ventricular depolarization so ventricular depolarization at the same time atrial repolarization also occurs but since the ventricular depolarization waves are current is very strong so atrial repolarization wave is masked and this t wave it represents the ventricular repolarization wave right so you know the normal duration and the amplitude okay and also we have discussed about the pr segment and st segment now we have one more important things here intervals pr intervals and qt intervals now what is this intervals and what is the difference between a segment and an interval so in an interval it includes one segment and combination of a segment and a wave is known as an interval so pr interval means from the starting of the p wave to the starting of the qrs complex it is known as pr interval so pr interval start is the inter time interval from the starting of p wave to the starting of qrs complex actually it should be pq interval but many of the time this q wave is not visible so or absent normally only so it is termed as pr interval so normal duration it should be less than 0.2 second okay so its value is around 0.122 to 0.2 seconds so if the duration is extend for a longer duration if the pr interval is increased the duration is increased it indicates the delay from the conduction through the av node okay so the like in first degree hard block we'll discuss the that thing later timing remember from where to where pr interval extend from the starting of the p wave to the starting of the qrs complex and the normal duration then we have one more important interval qt interval it starts from the qrs complex to the end of the t wave to end of the t wave that is starting of the ventricular depolarization to the end of the ventricular repolarization so this is termed as qt interval okay again you can see in this interval you can get one st segment and waves qrs as complex as well as t wave so interval is a combination of segment and waves okay so normal duration of the qt interval you can see uh, it is around 0 0.4 0 0.43 or 0 0.4 seconds okay so 0 0.4 means two bigger squares you can see it extends two bigger squares so this is the normal intervals so you should remember this uh, normal waves p wave qrs complex t wave and two important segments pr segment and st segments and pr interval and qt interval okay so uh, we'll discuss about the other points what is a lead in an ecg what are the different uh, leads totally we use the dual lead system we'll discuss in the next video so please subscribe our channel and also click the notification icon thank you